At this time, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the presence of two of our senators, Frank Oven and Ben Pangolin, and thank you for joining us. And here's the next question. Are there going to be good paying permanent jobs created on the green base? Will these be filled by Americans from Hawaii and the U.S. mainland, or will, it, or will we be able to get them? Uh, whether they're good paying jobs or not, I guess, depends on who's receiving the money and what, what the expectations are. Uh, but yes, uh, the, uh, uh, the intent would be to add a lot to the local uh, labor roles. Thank you. Next question. This buildup will bring many workers to the island. What is the plan to accommodate this community workforce? Another good question. The, uh, I was uh, able to visit just today uh, a uh, temporary worker housing area that's uh, under construction. Ground has been broken uh, up just beyond Two Lovers Point uh, next to the Northern District Wastewater Treatment Plant. Uh, this, this will not be the only such camp. This one in particular would be able to hold 18,000 people. The intent is that uh, this would be um, a contained, uh, a, a self-contained little community with, uh, with the housing, with medical care, with messing, uh, with, with various other things. And the workers would live there when they weren't working and they'd be transported directly to the, to the work sites so that uh, if, we're, if we do this correctly, we'll be able to do this without uh, impacting unduly on the movement of other people around the roads and byways of Guam and, uh, uh, and the services otherwise available on Guam. Uh, it would also have the advantage of allowing uh, minimal uh, interruption to the tourist trade. This would be our intent. Thank you. Next question. There is some uncertainty and anxiety among the people of Guam regarding the buildup and what is going on in Okinawa with the uncertainty of Japan's decision on Futenma. What can you tell us that might assuage some of this anxiety? We, uh, we are continuing discussions uh, with the government of Japan as they review the plan uh, we uh, have been assured that uh, a resolution will be determined by the end of May, and we're looking forward to that. Okay. And next question. It seems like so much of, of the land DOD controls is underused. Why do you need so much more? I'm not the expert on... Uh, on the, the use of various parcels. There are some where the uh, uh, particular use, for example, the radar, the, uh, the radar instruments that uh, track the weather around Guam to aid air transportation, both at the International Airport and at Anderson Air Force Base, requires a certain standoff distance from the radiation, from the device doing the radiating, so that for health and safety reasons, uh, the ammunition uh, storage area obviously requires a certain amount of uh, space that looks otherwise unused, but uh, regulations governing explosive quantities, safety distances, and things to ensure the safety of the, round, the surrounding community require uh, uh, a buffer area. In general, uh, looking at the plans for development, uh, when you start laying down the needs of uh, uh, various organizations that are going to be here, you quickly use up the available space. Uh, we are not trying to encumber excessive space. We're trying to make sure that we have the proper space and the proper setback distances from, uh, from roads and things so that uh, uh, the base uh, uh, can be a congenial neighbor to the, to the rest of Guam. Thank you very much. And at this time, I'd like to call uh, Dr. Robert Underwood back up to the stage and has something to present to you. I will take the privilege of asking the last question, even though I didn't write it down in the card. I'm breaking the rules. I'm not <laughs> so just on the, on the issue of uh, the relationship uh, with Japan and uh, Japan, you know, because 
And here on item, of course, we're treated to a lot of uh, media reports, and there's a, a lot of things that always make it look like it's about to, you know, come undone or unglued at any, any moment in time. And uh, every time uh, I try to uh, kind of follow that line of question to people who are uh, like yourself uh, in more knowledgeable positions, I, and there, there, it, would it be fair to say that there isn't anything uh, um, in the foreseeable future that will really un undo this uh, uh, arrangement that uh, this uh, military bill? Uh, to the last part of uh, the president's question, uh, we anticipate a successful conclusion to all the discussions going on with Japan uh, and with some flexibility on, on each side, which is certainly, uh, uh, certainly appropriate. To the broader question, uh, the uh, uh, published reports of all of our activities in Japan and especially uh, published reports of the uh, situation in Okinawa depart greatly from, from reality as I know it. Uh, I had the privilege of living in Okinawa for three years. Our bases in Okinawa have uh, Okinawa personnel as guards on the gate, armed. Uh, our emergency services aboard the base, the paramedics, the uh, the uh, fire department, uh, the emergency medical technicians are also Okinawans, and I submit that this is a uh, this is a pretty profound level of trust each way. If uh, you have small children, you're living aboard the base, you have one of the medical emergencies in the middle of the night that you always seem to have with small children. It never happens in a day; it's always the middle of the night. At least it was in my family. Uh, and you dial 911, it's uh, local faces that show up at your door, not uh, to provide emergency medical care, not, uh, not American faces, and everybody likes it that way. Uh, at, the Naval, at the U.S. Naval Hospital in Okinawa, we always have 10 or 12 uh, Japanese Okinawan interns, uh, and they're providing, obviously, critical medical care to uh, uh, anybody at the Naval Hospital, both active duty personnel, retired people, whoever else is there. Uh, anecdotal reports indicate that uh, the uh, uh, spouses of uh, service people who go to the hospital to give birth uh, report that the Japanese, the Okinawan doctors, have a much more of a caring manner, bedside manner than the American doctors. The women actually seem to prefer the uh, the, the, the local doctors. So uh, there's a uh, there's a decidedly positive relationship to uh, to the to the relationships between the two communities. Uh, those items, of course, don't make the news because they're not terribly newsworthy. Uh, when uh, when a number of people get together to uh, to do a protest or to express their opinion about something, that of course makes the news. And then the the, the headline uh, that usually accompanies things, regardless of what it says in the article, is about a breast of violence and a adversarial relationship between the U.S. forces and the, and the local population. And that's, that's just not true. Uh, the particular history of, of Okinawa is that it was the scene of the last battle of World War II, and I say that with some trepidation here in Guam because describing a battle in World War II and some other places, people in Guam always invites uh, comparison with the battle here in Guam. But uh, it was the last battle of, uh, uh, of, of World War II. Uh, it was particularly uh, bad for the people who lived on Okinawa. Uh, you get two different estimates that half of the civilians that were alive at the beginning of the battle were dead by the end, or uh, at, on the high end, at the low end, it was at least one third. So one out of three uh, civilians who were alive at the beginning of the battle perished or 